Hi, this is Charlie Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Um, in our flowchart series, uh, we briefly go over systematic approaches for cath lab emergencies. Today, we discuss an algorithm for coronary perforation uh, taken from our pericardiogram video. I have included a link to the full video in the section below. Okay, so uh, perforations are uh, never pleasant, and as we saw in this case, uh, patients uh, can crash quickly. So uh, when you're faced with a coronary perforation, uh, first, and as quickly as possible, uh, temporize the bleed. Uh, inflate the balloon, uh, match one-to-one -one, uh, with the vessel diameter at low pressure uh, to occlude the vessel. Uh, you'll need to keep the balloon inflated for a long period of time, uh, usually 15 minutes or even longer. Uh, second, um, anticoagulation should not be reversed uh, unless all equipment is out of the coronary artery. Uh, you run the risk of thrombosing the larger, more proximal vessels and uh, causing even bigger problems. Uh, third, uh, if the patient becomes hypotensive, uh, you'll need fluids, pressors, and sometimes even uh, mechanical uh, circulatory support. Uh, you may need to perform uh, emergency pericardiocentesis to uh, relieve the tamponade. Uh, you may need to transfuse or even auto-transfuse uh, for very large uh, perforations. Uh, obviously, uh, remember to get help, uh, alert uh, cardiac surgery, uh, ask another in interventionalist uh, to come assist you. Uh, prolonged balloon inflation will more often than not be uh, sufficient uh, to uh, close the perforation. And if that's the case, great. Um, do consider stenting the vessel uh, given possible microdissections uh, from the balloon inflation. But uh, what if the perforation does not seal uh, with uh, prolonged balloon inflations? Well, if the uh, perforation is in a large vessel, uh, then your principal option is to use covered stents, either the graft master or the uh, PK papyrus. All right, so what if the perforation is in a small vessel, uh, like a side branch? Well, uh, one option is to actually use a covered stent as well, but in the main branch, uh, that, that then excludes uh, the side branch. Uh, the other option is to embolize the vessel, uh, either using the patient's own uh, fat or, or clot, or to use endovascular coils. Okay, so if your perforation is in a, a small distal part of a major vessel, a covered stent that will not be an option. Here again, you can use coils or fat or clot uh, to embolize the vessel. And delivering fat or coil or, or clot is actually uh, very similar to delivering coils. Uh, first, you uh, place your microcatheter in a target vessel. Um, you trim off a little piece of the patient's own fat or clot and then introduce it into the microcatheter. And next, uh, rather than using a wire to push the fat or clot along, uh, you generally flush it down the microcatheter uh, with a saline flush. And at this point, uh, if your perforation is still not closed, uh, then uh, you'll have to call cardiac surgery. Uh, while you're waiting for them, uh, keep the occluding balloon inflated and uh, transfuse and or provide hemodynamic support uh, as uh, needed. Thank you for watching.